Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, part 56. This video shows the difference in construction between a Stuart 504 boiler and a Stuart 501 boiler. The differences are not just the physical size. The design of each of these boilers is quite different. I'm going to concentrate on the Stuart 504 boiler. These clips are taken from a video that I made quite a long time ago when I bought a brand new but very rusty Stuart 504 boiler. Keep watching and you will see the transformation. These clips are heavily edited from the original video which is much longer. As far as I'm aware Stuart models used to do three boilers in the 500 range, a 500, a 501 and this of course is a 504, the biggest of the three. The boiler itself is quite loosely fixed to a cast iron mounting. Here's a shot of the cast iron mounting. And here's a shot of the other end, with the fake doors and damper. I really do like these type of boilers. I've had quite a few over the years. This is a particularly good one because it is unsteamed. 504 boilers and possibly the other two 500s and 501s were originally supplied as a self-assembly kit. Just a load of parts in a box. I know this for a fact because I once bought a box of bits and this particular box was unopened. And when I looked inside, that's literally what it was. All the component parts of a 504 boiler. It's time to dismantle the boiler. This is the pressure gauge and siphon. This is the clack valve. And as you can see, all of these components are all like new. They've never had any water anywhere near them. This is the lower water gauge fitting. And all of these fittings are just loose in the holes. And as you can see very clearly, no evidence of any lime scale, water, corrosion or anything. Just a bit of tarnish on the metal. For now I'm just putting these parts into a green plastic box as usual and I will clean them all up using my polishing spindle and then finish the job off with some brasso and a cloth. Stuart models have always had a very odd arrangement for taps and I suppose it's quite clever. This is a stainless steel insert. What you've got to be careful of though is you don't screw it too far into the boiler bush but then again it's not very tight so it comes out. Here I'm removing the safety valve and I didn't have to use a spanner on any of these fittings. I'm going to discard the aluminium washers and fit copper washers when I reassemble the boiler. The chimney is just a push fit into the casting, that's very easy to remove. And now it's time to take the thing apart. At this stage I feel that I have to issue a major health and safety warning, this is a sensible one. These type of boilers were manufactured in a different age, in an age before we knew how dangerous asbestos could be. So behind each of these side plates was a sheet of asbestos board. When I first received the 504 boiler, I even opened the box outside and I removed the asbestos board. So this is the second time I've taken these side plates off. First to remove the asbestos and dispose of it by the approved method, and the second one for the video. And while the boiler was outside, I cleaned off every trace of asbestos that I found on the castings or the side plates. So back in the workshop, the boiler components are all 100% safe to handle. All traces of asbestos has been removed. Having a look at the physical condition of the boiler, it really is quite good for its age. Like the steam fittings, it's very tarnished, but this will polish up beautifully on the polishing spindle. What I'm doing at the moment is using some Scotch-Brite to just clean off some of the corrosion. This was the worst of the marks on the boiler barrel, so just attacking it with some Scotch-Brite will make it easier to remove completely when I clean it up on the polishing spindle. I'm very pleased with this boiler, it was exactly as described by the seller and it arrived with me very quickly after I bought it and it was very well packed. As I said earlier, these were self-assembly kits and what you were supposed to do was clean up the castings. But very rarely have I ever seen a casting on a 504 or 501 or 500 boiler where anybody's really bothered to clean it up. But I'm going to clean up the castings and paint them and make the whole thing look very nice indeed. So what about the construction of this boiler? It's very robustly silver soldered together, very well made, and contains several tubes which hang under the main boiler barrel. And as it currently says on the screen, this is a Babcock type of boiler. One really neat feature of the 500 series of boilers is the fact that the centre tube is not a water tube. It is a superheater. All the others are water tubes. And the purpose of having these external water tubes on what is basically a pot type boiler is just to increase the surface area for heating. The construction of the superheater tube is different. 
First of all, it takes steam from the top of the boiler and feeds it along back into the boiler, but not into the main part of the boiler. It goes straight up to the top bush where the tap is attached. So basically, the wet steam is passed through the fire before it comes out of the tap. A simple and clever design and very effective. You get really hot steam from a 504 boiler. Really, the best stuff to stick this to the side panels is probably not super glue. An impact adhesive would be better. The main problem is that this kind of adhesive quickly soaks into the material and makes it more difficult for it to bond to the side panel, but after a couple of applications of the adhesive, it seems to work okay. It's important to bend one edge of it so that it fits into the curved part at the top, just like I'm showing in this clip. It's actually quite fiddly to do, and it takes a couple of attempts because it keeps trying to move out of the way of the curvature at the top part of the side panel, but eventually it sticks. If you would like to watch the original video series from which this clip was taken, the series is called A Stuart 504 Boiler Renovation. And after quite a bit of work, well, not really that much work, and it's a labour of love anyway, this is what it looks like now, and it's a thing of beauty. The original twin spirit burners that come with this boiler, and by the way, I didn't get one with this one, are surprisingly efficient and generate rather a lot of heat, but they're not controllable. So all that happens when you're running your engine is the safety valve blows off all the time. The purpose of this compilation video is to illustrate the differences between the two designs of boiler. This is the Stuart 501 boiler, and as you can see, there are definitely differences between this, the 501 boiler, and the one you've just seen, the 504 boiler. The following edited clips are taken from my series, Rebuilding a Model Steam Plant. Here's a kit of parts for the 501 boiler. As you can see, I've polished up the boiler barrel and painted the parts. I've also drilled a hole which is a quarter of an inch in diameter underneath the front casting. This is where the pipe carrying the exhaust from the condenser fits. The sides of this boiler are anodized, so they're fairly heat resistant to start with, but I'm not leaving it at that. I'm fitting some heat insulation. This is the modern day safe equivalent of asbestos. I think it's made from China clay. Once the boiler was loosely assembled, I tightened each of the nuts to pull the end plates tight up against the side panels. I only tested this boiler to twice working pressure, which is 120 pounds per square inch of hydraulic pressure. And because it's not been overstressed like the one you've just seen, all of the boiler bushes are aligned with each other. I don't need to go into great detail to show how different the design of the two boilers actually is. This is the 501 boiler on the steam plant, and this is the 504 boiler. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. And from a scale point of view, the size of the 501 boiler is far better for the size of these engines. And that's just about all I can say in this video, except of course, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.